Well, welcome back to today's episode. Um, we're going to be doing a, a little maintenance on the G. Nothing big. Going to check the oil and check and see what the underneath of it looks like. This will be the first time I've changed the oil on it. Um, I've put 2,000 miles on it since I got it. Oil levels seem fine. A little low on the dipstick, but not out of safe range. Huh? And a little love for the Maverick. Took its maiden voyage out last night with the new Super ATV trailing arms. They actually performed very well in some spots where normally that they would catch here. It didn't. We made it over the rock. It made it easier to bump up over stuff. But given all the snow and whatnot, made an epic muddy mess. So, working on getting all this stuff cleaned out. Got the feet over here taking out the seats and the harnesses and stuff so we can try and get more of the mud out, clean it up. One thing, we did have a little carnage last night. Not real sure how it happened or where it happened. Um, if you see the radius rod here, and then compared right here, I'm thinking that this one got a little bent. Not real sure. We wasn't doing any, wasn't doing anything really bad, but did hear a loud pop, and that might be a where it came. Um, gonna go through and check that. Won't be on this episode, but if you got any recommendations for 64 inch uh, radius rods, I wanted to go with L and W, but they only make them for 72. Uh, if you got any recommendations, drop it in the comments below. That way I can. Uh, get to work and get them replaced um, I've got some other stuff coming for the front a arms we got this one right here it's got a little bend in it got it from Walden's Ridge haven't replaced it yet uh, got another video coming of the CT arms that I've got for it but today we're just gonna work on the G and look it over and check it out so I hope you enjoy today's episode So you see my handy dandy homemade wooden ramps. I actually use these for uh, loading the race car and stuff on the trailer. I created these a few years ago. This is the second version that I've made. Um, they make it really easy to get lowered cars on there. So I'm a firm believer in Rotella. Um, all the motors that I've ever built, put together and raced and stuff, I've used Rotella in them quite a bit. 
uh, never had any problems. So staying consistent, I use it in my truck. I've used it in all my cars and stuff for many years. Not a uh, sponsorship plug, but then I got some cheap oil to flush, to pour in, to drain out, and Wix filter. So should be pretty simple, straightforward. So let's go under and see what the bottom looks like. So surprisingly enough, we still have the uh, factory plastic, what they would be skid plate under here. Um, gonna pull that off here real quick and see if we can find anything. So far it doesn't look like there's really any fluid leaks. Don't see any damage, but we'll see whenever we get under here and see how well it was taken care of. So we got our infamous trusty, can't find it 10 millimeter. I'm a well prepared person. I don't want to jinx myself, but I have backup 10 millimeters. And I don't let people use my tools anymore. So I don't have to worry about them losing my tools. Hmm. Well, let's see. No leaks in the front. Front main seal and everything seems to be all right. Don't see any jankiness under here going on. Radiator looks good. No leaks coming from it. Uh, oil pan looks, doesn't look like it's leaking any. No leak around the oil filter. I don't know how tight that's on there. We'll see how bad it is to get off. You see this little spot on the oil pan. Just a little spot of rust. Surface rust, that's not bad. Motor mounts look good. Shoot, let's get the oil out of this thing, see what it looks like. Four. 15 millimeter. Mm -hmm. Hopes and dreams can be crushed if the uh, drain plugs stripped out, but it doesn't feel like it is. And I don't see any jankiness RTV sealant, which you see a lot of people do. Oh, shit. I like my crush washer. Might have to search for that one. Now while that's draining, I'm gonna get this oil filter off here, so I gotta go get my oil filter wrench. So I went and got my filter wrench. This thing right here is super handy. I've got a small one and a big one. Uh, they work out really well. Just a rubber band. Put it over it. Pull it tight, has teeth on it that bites. And then you break the filter loose with it. 
can slide it around. I don't know how tight that filter was, but I wasn't going to sit there and fight with it. I've already learned my lesson on filters. Let's see. Yeah, it looked like that oil was a little overdue to be changed. So we'll let that drain out for a little bit, and then we'll go up top and run some... Uh, Run the crappier oil through it, kind of let it drain out a little bit. Let this sit here for a moment. So I'm gonna get this cap off. Anybody's ever done an oil change before? Holy crap. Well, that's not a party. Always keep me a pair of pliers in my pocket. There we go. that bad boy up there shameless plug from my homie rowdy josh holmes check him out on the interwebs he just built a really cool uh twin turbo ls powered supra grew up close to where i did so shameless plug hit him up get some merch from him i support my homies So I'll get my dipstick cleaned off. If you've never changed oil before, this is probably entertaining to you. If you've changed oil before, well, you're just watching because you're bored. So I'm going to use my crappy oil, pour in here, let it drain out for a little bit. Kind of if there's anything residual in there, flush it out. And there's that. We're going to let it sit for a minute. So while this is slow draining, letting it sit, kind of cool off for a little bit, I've been working on trying to get all the mud from trail 16 and trail 2 last night. And I think there's some from the trail on Panther Rock. I'll get all this out get this thing pressure washed. I washed it the first time this morning and it changed colors. It was bad last night after all this snow and this rain and stuff we've had. So here in a little bit, I'm going to pressure wash the inside out. I'm gonna take the roof off because it's easier. It seems like if you take the roof off to, to wash the insides of these things, you know, it's doesn't create a whole, I don't know, cyclone of keeping mud and stuff in here it just blows out easier and then it's easier to wash the outside so yeah so on to i guess while this is hmm i think i'm gonna top it off check it and see what we're gonna do all right we got my oil filter ready to go back on I'm going to clean the edges up a little bit, get any dirt, debris, nonsense taken care of, clean it, make sure it has a good seal. I have lubricated my gasket on the oil filter. Now we're going to have to drain this oil to try and find my crush washer, unfortunately. So, clean that up. Don't want no residual oil around it, so we can check for leaks. So. I'll slide my drain plug back in here for right now so it doesn't leak on the concrete as bad and then find my crush washer oops all right let's find the crush washer
All right, fresh washer's been found. Let's slip this bad boy on here real quick. We'll torque it down, fill it up with oil. Check for leaks. Get a little drip on the concrete, but not too bad. Let's see. Clean that off there. All right, let's go fill her up. I have no idea what's going on with this GoPro. It is losing its ever-loving mind. So let's try starting the car. I'll put a chalk under the back tire so we don't roll backwards. Let's see. Let it run for a second. Now let's go check for leaks. The only leak I should have is a defective oil filter. Hmm. So I took some uh, brake cleaner and paper towels and cleaned all that up. I guess if you got the dipstick out and you go fill it up with oil, some of it comes out. I've never seen that before, but I don't know. I mean, there wasn't no signs of a previous oil leak, so. Just a fluke on that part. Normally I just leave stuff off like this, but for the sake of, I don't know, it serves a really good purpose, keeping shit from getting up into your serpentine belts and whatnot. So, I'm gonna put her back on. We may revisit this at a later date, but being a daily driver, there's a lot of raccoons, possums, skunks, whatnot. This plastic might save me a good bit of headache, so. I don't know, maybe one day I'll uh, get me an aluminum skid plate made. That'll really provide some protection. Some of these started and tightened up, and then got to position the rest of them. Mm -hmm. 
couple of these in the back. Let's see. That one. Now, not all the bolts was in there. Some of them's missing, so. Oh well, we'll put back what we found. It falls off, it falls off. We'll just go back and pick it up. That's it for the skid plate. Now, got it off the ramps while the oil's settling. Because VQ dipsticks kind of suck as far as adding oil, checking oil. Uh, let's see. Let's see if we can find and reset our maintenance manager. Maintenance. Uh, engine oil. All right, that one's done. Oil filter. Boom, done. Sweet. So it's about over 3,000 miles. Sometimes I do three to five. So we're gonna check the oil and see if it's settled or not. You pull the dipstick out. Check what the oil levels are. Clean the dipstick out. Then you put it back in. Man, literally, this is the first time I've ever had a problem with trying to get this dipstick back in. I hate VQ dipsticks, even on the front wheel drive versions, they suck. Getting them back in, checking all levels. It's like design engineers were just like, hey, let's give them something. A hard task. Uh, looks like we're about a half quart, half quart away from being full, so that's not bad. Did lose a little on the ground, so there's that. We'll check it one more time, and then we'll go get some oil that I got and add it to it. Mm. 
Yeah, about half quart. So let's put this back in the hole before we go get oil. Make sure my theory's right about adding oil and causing leaks. Well, looky there. Got a little bit of 540 left in the stash. And a little bit top rough. We'll check that here in a minute and see what it looks like. So let it settle for a minute. Gonna give it one more check. And then we'll go clean the Maverick out. Yeah, we're looking all right. Check it about two weeks. Well, since there's no leak, I mean, I'll check it in about a week, two weeks to see if it's burning any oil. Didn't smell like it's burning oil, but being that this car is, you know, used and new to me, and the way these motors are, they can burn oil. So we'll check and make sure that there's no oil burn. Make sure it's got a clean bill of health before I start raising hell in it. So with that being said, this is the end of uh, today's little episode. Um, there's a link below. If you guys want to check out our merchandise, uh, copy something. We got something coming up, uh, a couple new designs I've talked about before. Um, grab you something on there, give us a shout out, you know, share this video. Um, obviously subscribe, like, you know, notification bell kind of hammer that in there i know sometimes it may get annoying you hear it but you know if you hit the notification bell you you will get notified about our videos uh there's going to be a variety of different stuff this year a lot of traveling a lot of a lot of stuff that's going to be pretty cool so help support the channel there's links below um merchandise all that i think that's about it hope everybody had a happy new year uh a merry christmas and, and all that stuff um, I had a, a video that I was doing earlier that I was going to do for, for New Year's and whatnot, and I didn't finish it. Um, got tied up doing some other stuff. But anyways, enough of my rambling. Um, peace out. Till the next one. You guys be safe. Have fun. Come back for the next episode. Peace.